What is going on everyone? Today we're going to be installing a set of these Last Fit Pro LED low beam headlights on my 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This kit should fit 2017 through 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokees. These are gonna be for the people like me where you have projectors from the factory, but they just have those dim halogen bulbs in there. So we're gonna switch these out for something brighter. The Pro Series has high power LED chips and it's 100 watts for the whole set, which is 50 watts per bulb. 10,000 lumens per set, 5,000 per bulb, and the color temp is a 6,000K pure white. The voltage range operation is 9 volts to 16 volts, and there's a two-year warranty. So we're going to start by popping the hood. On the inside of the wheel liner here, this is the passenger steer wheel well. It's the same over on the driver's side. You'll see there's a little door here, a little access door. You're going to grab it, rotate it. You can spin it either direction. It doesn't really matter, but you'll see it'll eventually pop out. And then you'll go do the same thing on the driver's side. So I'm going to be going through there and I'm going to be coming from the top. So it is a little more work, adds a little more time, but it's worth it for the access that you gain. So I recommend you get some sort of a ratchet. I recommend quarter inch drive. Right here I have an electric ratchet, Milwaukee, but you can just use a regular quarter inch drive ratchet. You'll also want an extension with a 10 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter socket. If you don't have an eight millimeter, you can use a five sixteenths. It's about the same size. And then you'll also probably want a small little flathead screwdriver or a pick. And if you don't have a five sixteenths or eight mil socket, you can substitute a bigger flathead screwdriver. So the bigger flathead screwdriver, the five sixteenths socket or the eight millimeter socket, one of the three, that is going to be for this clamp right here on the air box. We're going to loosen that up. Don't have to fully remove the clamp, just loose enough to where you can pull this back. It may be a little stiff. Don't be afraid to kind of pull on it a little bit. And then you're also going to want to grab this little breather hose and you can rotate it a little bit to get it free and then pull it off of the air box. Once that is done, you're going to come over here because this is the air scoop for the intake. And you can see there's a little green clip. You're going to want to kind of stretch the rubber seal off to the side and then pull it over the green clip and then pull that side off. And we will pull the rubber seal just forward a little bit so that this can come out of here. What we're going to do is lift this whole box out of here so we can get to this headlight much better. The only thing that holds this in place once you have this off and this off and this out of the way is just some metal studs with rubber grommets going over them. So I found the easiest way to do it. You'll grab uh, way down low, as low as you can over at this corner, and then put the other hand over here and just lift straight up while you wiggle. And then you're gonna wanna just kinda be careful. There's some cables and hoses and stuff running along here that may run across the top of the air box. You don't want them getting snagged on the little clips for the air box, so make sure you're clear there. And just kind of carefully work it up. And there we go, just set that aside for now. See, now you can get right to all this stuff. That right there is the high beam, and the low beam is over there. Now, for the passenger side, we have to move two things. The first is going to be your ECM. You don't have to unhook any connectors or anything. All you're going to do is locate this little plastic tab right here. You can see it's got a little tooth on it where it catches the bracket. So what you're going to do is push that back and then you're going to grab this whole bracket and wiggle and pull up. All right, there we go. So once it's pulled up, you can pull it away from the bracket. But this is going to allow you to kind of just move it out of the way a little bit. And then the 10 millimeter socket I mentioned and the ratchet and the extension is going to be to remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. This is your coolant reservoir. You can actually reach underneath to grab this. There we go. And then this one's nice and easy to get at. All you're going to do is shove and wiggle towards the back of the Jeep a little bit and lift up. There we go. So you can kind of rotate this a bit. You want to be very careful, obviously. You don't want to snap. These are just plastic ports 
that come out of the reservoir into the hose. So you don't want to force anything. You know, you can feel that it's free and you can just kind of move it around a little bit, not a lot. I just kind of tilt it to the side and push it over towards the driver's side a little bit. And then this ECM bracket here, same thing. You just move it around as needed. You don't want to do any hard yanking on it or anything. You do have electrical connectors hooked up. So this is just to loosen everything up so you get a little bit of leeway to get better access to the bulbs. And coming through the fender here, you can see the low beam, there's that rubber boot. So I'm actually gonna reach down from under the hood and you'll see there's two little rubber ears right here on the factory dust cover. You wanna grab one of those uh, to pull it off or you can grab around the edge here and just pull straight away from the headlight assembly. And there we go. There's your low beam bulb, the factory one. Do not disconnect the electrical connector before you pull the bulb. If you drop the bulb down in there and the connector is not hooked up to it, you're not gonna be able to retrieve the bulb without pulling the entire headlight assembly. I'm gonna reach up in there and we're gonna rotate the bulb counterclockwise. Once you rotate it counterclockwise enough, it will become loose and you can pull it out of there. Here we are on the top side now, low beam bulb right there. What we're going to do is just carefully pull this tab back. Don't pull it really far, but just enough to clear. Uh, there's a little tab right there on the bulb. So we're going to pull this back and just slide the old bulb off of there. So that is the passenger low beam removed. We're going to repeat the same steps on the driver's side. Just pull the rubber dust cover boot off. Leave the connector hooked up until the bulb is removed. Rotate bulb counterclockwise. Put the tab back and slide the old bulb off the factory connector. Then we have our LED bulbs with the new dust caps with fans built in. If your bulbs come with a little plastic protector cover over the diode right here, make sure you pull that plastic part off. That is just for shipping so they don't get damaged. So just like a factory bulb, you'll have a couple of different tabs here. There should be three little tabs on the mounting surface of the bulb going around. And you'll see it's kind of hard to notice, but this one right here is a little bit bigger than the other two. So you need to line up the big one with the bigger slot in the projector headlight housing. You can see there's three slots in this housing right here. Line up the bigger tab on the bulb with the bigger slot. Make sure once you get those lined up, you push the bulb nice and flush up against the headlight housing and then you'll rotate it clockwise to lock it in place. There we go, got it rotated clockwise into position. What we're gonna do is take the factory connector down here, which has this little tab on it, and plug it in to this. It's just gonna push together. There's no alignment tab in here, so the factory connector will plug into this two different ways. So we're gonna try it one way. If it doesn't work, we'll have to disconnect it, flip it over, and plug it back in. And we'll turn our headlights on to the low beam and you'll see it's not working right now. So what I have to do is disconnect it, flip the connector over 180 degrees, and then reconnect. And now you'll see a bright bulb. The fan on the bulb itself is working and the fan on the dust cap is working. So now that everything is verified to be working, we need to take and stuff all the wiring and the connectors into the headlight housing here. That way we can get our dust cap on. Then we'll take our cap and make sure we install it with the arrow facing down because that is where the fan vent is and we don't want any water getting in there, any sort of moisture that gets in there. We want it to be able to drain out. So that's why it's important this faces down. What we're gonna do is just get it lined up over the hole and then you should be able to just push it straight on just like that. And if you want, if you're having troubles getting this thing on, you can go ahead and just snap it into place and then run your finger around the outside. Make sure that the lip of the dust seal is in fact going all the way around. And then you can rotate it if you need the arrow to be adjusted. And there we go. The cap is pushed on and rotated to the correct position. Now we're going to repeat all the same steps we just did on the passenger side here on the driver's side. Once we are done there, we're pretty much done in the wheel well here. So we can go ahead and note the cutouts here on the top and the bottom that we will line up our little dust cap with. And we're going to push on it and rotate it about 90 degrees. That way the tabs are offset from where these are. You need to make sure to push nice and firm when you're rotating. 
That way both the tabs on the little access door here actually grab. If you're not pushing in on it when you turn, uh, you might only get one finger that catches. So make sure both of them are engaged. Okay, we can go ahead, put the coolant reservoir and ECM back into position. I recommend doing the ECM first, that way you get a little bit more room. You'll see there's a tab here, a tab there, and a tab there. What you need to do is see these corresponding slots right here. You wanna start high and then shove it down. So what we're gonna do is get these two uh, metal bracket tabs into these bigger parts. We're going to push and slide down at the same time. There you go. If you've done it successfully, it should go down far enough to where this plastic tab locks into place again over the metal bracket. Because it's held in place just with clips, it does have a little bit of play even when properly installed. So don't worry if it does this, that's fine. We're all good there. Coolant reservoir. There's that one bolt right down there, has a little shoulder on it. So between the shoulder of that bolt and this bracket right here, so right on that a bolt shoulder right there is where that plastic part of the reservoir with the little notch is going to ride. So we're carefully gonna wiggle this. Again, be very careful not to break anything. It is just plastic. You get that reservoir notch up onto that bolt shoulder. And then you'll have to get this tab underneath a little weather seal and pull towards you forward. I recommend starting this bolt first because this one can be a little tricky since it is recessed. And just like the removal of this bolt over here, I find that reinstalling it is also easier if you put the thumb through here and come from the bottom side with your finger. That kind of helps you keep it from dropping it down and losing it in the engine bay. Then we'll use our 10 millimeter again to tighten these two up. Just needs to be snug, doesn't have to be anything too tight. You don't want to snap them or strip them out. And now we can reinstall the air box. So basically we need to get this post right there, that metal one and the one down there lined up with the two grommets right there. And then we also have a grommet right there on the front side that is going to line up with this little plastic dowel right there. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of set it into position how it needs to be. And you're not gonna wanna force anything. You're just gonna wanna be nice and gentle. Again, watch these cables and wires down here, especially since we were just in there messing around. So mainly what you're gonna wanna watch for when you're putting this back in is you'll want to kinda pull this back so you clear that. Uh, you wanna watch to make sure that this goes over the top of this once it gets low enough and you don't wanna get caught up on this. Also the air box can catch on the AC line here. So just kinda look at the perimeter if you're, if you're not able to go down or whatever, it's obviously because you're hitting something. So just take your time, look around, don't force anything. All right, now we're at this point right here where this is down far enough to where it's actually resting on this seal. And you can see that the grommet here is lined up with that little dowel. Come over here, pull this guy up and over, or at least in front of the scoop. So it's not in the way, not underneath it anymore. Okay, and then everything here is lined up. And then you can just go ahead, give it a gentle wiggle and push down. And there we go. There's not really a snap or anything. You'll just physically feel it go down. And if it's not seated correctly, this stuff won't line up. We got to hook up the pipe here. This is why I recommended the small flathead screwdriver. It's going to help you by running this around. So it's a little easier to get it on. Go ahead and slide the clamp into position. You'll see there's a little slot right here that's gonna go over this, and then there's a notch right here that's gonna go around that. There we go. You can go ahead, use the flat head, the eight millimeter or the five sixteenths and just snug this up. You don't wanna reef on this thing. It just needs to be snug. You don't wanna strip out the clamp. That's it. We'll then take our PCV hose and just push it right back on to that plastic port. It's as easy as that. And then coming back to the weather seal here, you'll see I got about three of these that came off. So how we're gonna put these back on is you wanna have it go in the direction of the seal, stretch it over the one end till it catches, stretch it back to the right the opposite way, 
and then push down and let it go back. And you should see it's fully hooked up. And we are all done. Make sure to grab all of your tools out from under the hood before you close it. There we go. Much brighter improvement over factory. So that is gonna do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.